Okay, good morning. And this is our March CTE webinar. And I know several schools have work days today, so we may not have a very large attendance as it's the end of the third nine weeks, but we do have some things to catch you up with. To start off with, Angie Fry was going to be with us here today. However, she had a death in her family and is not able to join us. But we do want to make sure that if you have any questions about getting your pathway submitted, again, a reminder, they are due March 15th, which is next week. You might check and make sure that you look at your pathway applications and check the box for released. There appears to be some districts that maybe the superintendent hasn't quite released all those. So even though you've released them, if they have not been released to KSDE, they're still hanging out there and they can't process those for you. So possibly being Friday, you might double check that, make sure everything has been released onto KSDE that is ready and needs to be approved. So then those consultants can work on approving your pathways and getting back with you on those. The other thing, do you have something? And I just want to piggyback on that. If you have a problem with something, I would just suggest you go ahead and submit it because you can go back and fix, but you can't, if you don't submit it initially, you can't. So like if somebody has a problem, it's not really a problem anymore with articulation agreements because you can always choose one of the statewide ones as long as there's one that fits your situation. But what I'm trying to tell you is make sure that like for instance, if there's a class that's not coded, I mean, I'd go ahead and, that you need I go ahead and release it, and then knowing that you'll have to come back in and fix. So, I had one of those last night. Okay. Just a reminder that they're due um, March 15th. The other deadline that's coming up that Angie was going to address a little bit is the follow-up report that's due April. So we want to make sure that um, you're taking care of that information. That would be graduates of last year, your follow-up information. So if you... Can, that window is open. You can go in and to your pathways and upload that information into the system so that's well taken care of. And then we'll, at the end of the day today, if we have time, we will talk a little bit more about some of the um, participants, the concentrators, and the completers. If not, Angie's going to join us in April and we'll get some more updates from her on how to collect that data. But I know last time we talked about that many of you might be starting looking at that first semester list of students and going ahead and getting that information pulled together. So all you had to do was your second semester list of courses and get those students coded into your system. So I'll turn this over to Clela and let her introduce our guest this morning. Yes, uh, I'm happy to have uh, a group here from Kingman, uh, Norwich, uh, USD 331. And uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Deppenbrock and Max Clark uh, and Andy Albright and Curtis Alban. And they're going to talk about the six star character education program that they've developed at, at USD 331. Okay. Well, thank you for the introduction. Um, let's see if I can share my screen. Um, like Cleo said, we have uh, developed the Six Star Character Education Program. Um, this has been over the course of about three years now. Um, I'm going to just I'm going to use a Google Slides to uh, to uh, present this. Um, I didn't know how big of a, of a group I would be speaking to. Uh, the, one of the things that's uh, part of the Six Star Program is appropriate language. And Rick Lee was one of my mentor coaches and mentor teachers. Mentors are, are great, especially when uh, they aren't assigned to you. They just, uh, they just attach themselves to you, which is fantastic. Uh, Rick's, Rick's suggestion was, when anytime you speak in front of a group, tell a, tell a funny story of some sort. And uh, this one kind of goes with appropriate language. And uh, people who are from Kansas can probably associate because it's uh, pretty rural. There was a uh, pastor who moved to a small town from a, from a larger community, and it was the first time he'd ever had a house before. So uh, he 
you know, moved everything in and found out that he had a, a lawn that he needed to, to mow. So he started to head toward the hardware store to buy a uh, lawnmower. And on the way there, he, he uh, walked past a house and there was a little boy who had a um, lawnmower and a sign set next to it that said, uh, we'll mow yards trying to save money to, to buy a bicycle. So the pastor thought, you know, uh, we have bicycles from our children that are grown now. Uh, maybe I could just trade him a bicycle for the lawnmower. And so he, he asked the boy this, and the boy said, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll agree to that. So the pastor took the lawnmower home, and, and uh, he started uh, pulling on the, on, the, uh, on the rope to try to get the lawnmower to start. And, uh, after a while, he's, you know, he's pretty frustrated, and the little boy rode by on the bicycle. And the, the pastor said, hey, um, you sold me this bicycle, and it, or the, you sold me this lawnmower, and it doesn't work. And he goes, well, mister, you just have to cuss at it a little bit. And he goes, I've been a pastor for 25 years. I, I, don't, I don't cuss. I don't even remember how. And he goes, Mr., you keep pulling on that rope. You'll remember. <laughs> so um, if, if nothing else, hopefully you got a, little, a cute little story you can maybe share with somebody sometime. Uh, quotes that motivate. These are some things that uh, I kind of tend to be a quote guy. I like, uh, I think it reveals how other people think. Um, Tim Ferriss is somebody who I've read quite a bit. Uh, his, his quote is, win the morning and you win the day. This has been a, a labor of love over the last three years, and it's been kind of inch by inch. We've, it's taken a while at times. It's gotten sluggish. I coach a couple of sports, and, so I, and I have four children, so I stay pretty busy. But we've, uh, we've just about made it to the finish line. I'll show you our website here in a little bit. Um, but winning the morning, uh, that's when I get a chance to do a lot of uh, work on this. Uh, whatever is allowed is encouraged. One of my um, principles of the past is, is – uh, has said that and that's stuck with me for a long time. And um, when we start talking about what is allowed, um, when people aren't held accountable to a standard, um, we tend to fall to the least common denominator. Um, that's one of my principals in the past who's uh, kind of famous in this part of the state, Gene Haydock. Um, his uh, was always, you get what you model, and I think that holds true in, in, uh, in about every aspect of our lives. Um, when we break eye contact to check our phones, we degrade trust. Um, keep your cell phones away from meals and meetings. This is Simon Sinek, probably the most influential person on starting this because his book, uh, Start With Why, was really the reason. Uh, I was actually reading that book um, when this idea came about. And the question that I asked was, um, why are we doing what we're doing? Um, and his other thing is you have to ask the right question. Albert Einstein once said, and this is a paraphrase, Give me an hour to solve a problem, and I'll spend the first 55 minutes looking for the right question to ask. Because if I uh, ask the right question, the problem can be solved in five minutes. Um, I believe in the beginning we ask the right question. Uh, where do we want kids to be in six to eight years post-graduation, and what skills do we want them to have? And this really um, blends in with a lot of the state initiatives. Um, I think they were ahead of the game. This kind of restored my uh, faith in education, to be really honest, because it feels like, you know, we go start the same day over and over and over again, and we wonder if we're making an impact. But uh, this was really what I felt like was the right question. Um, the answer to, to our six star, I really believe, came from the populace, from business owners, teachers, and community members, as well as parents. Um, we're in the third year of development and pilot in the beginning. It came from, like I said, um, uh, college and career ready and CTE. Uh, in an in-service, I asked the question, why are we here as teachers? To me, it's to educate, evaluate, and hold kids accountable for their decisions and actions. And I really think that that's what this program has the ability to do. Um, we have curriculum to teach the kids what's expected, a web-based tool to evaluate the kids, and then reports that enable the, leader, the leaders to have conversations about strengths and deficiencies. Um, in addition, the students can learn about their weaknesses and improve on them, which is what we should all try to do in all areas of our lives. Uh, the school can also learn which areas to focus on. We're, we're uh, again, we're, this has been kind of inch by inch. It's taken a while to get here. Um, at this point, it's a, it's, a, it's a flailing business at this point from the standpoint of we haven't made any sales to speak of. Um, however, we're, we're getting really close to maybe taking this to market, not only for schools, but also there's a couple of businesses who are interested in par partnering with us. And of course, they're, ulterior motive is they want the kids that are good. So um, we, we want to make this something that fits uh, together from both sides. The, the businesses get kids and that they, uh, they feel are employable, and then we also provide kids with employability skills. 
um, why, how, and what. Um, the first, the first one there is uh, why for me. Um, I know that everybody has that teacher that made an impact on them. We did a educator night. Uh, I'm the head football coach at Kingman, and we try to have themes for each one of our um, football games. We have a heroes night that we uh, celebrate people who serve uh, either in fire, uh, fire departments, police, EMS, or a veteran. Well, this year we had an educators night, and this was just the uh, the little form that the kids and I and I also filled out for Mr. Meyer, who was my high school track coach and counselor. Um, so. Um, why? Because we have people who influence us um, every day and we need to try to be that person. How? Um, the next picture there I think is a great picture of the difference between a boss who dictates and tells people what to do and a leader who's wanting to get in and uh, roll up their sleeves and dig in their heels and, and pull the sled in the same direction. And then what? Um, I think this is a great picture and this is a picture of empathy that our kids um, um, see if uh, only our eyes saw souls instead of bodies, how different our ideals of beauty would be. So we're, we're really looking for, in Six Star Character Ed, um, one of the things that I really believe is that um, in the day and age of social media and uh, such a high priority on sports, these are things, um, as, as I show you, that anybody can do. It's uh, You're being rewarded for being a good kid. It doesn't matter how well you throw a football or dribble a basketball or or can run on a track. It has nothing to do with those things. These are things that every kid can do that can make them successful later on. Um, this is our, our school's mission statement, which fits right in with, with uh, Six Star. Notice that character is first. Um, our mission is to fully develop character abilities and potentials of each student. Um, from concept to design, um, I, so I'll, I'll backtrack just a little bit. Um, when I when I asked the the original question, um, why are we here? Uh, I went. I, I hate to admit this. I was not a Facebook person. And I I am now. Um, I feel like I'm in a counseling session. Um, <laughs> but Facebook is a powerful medium. To uh, it can be uh, certainly can be in a negative uh, light, but it can also be for good. So I asked the question of my. 700 friends, uh, quote unquote, on Facebook that were business owners, what is it that you're looking for in employees? Because I went back to why are we here? And the answers to those questions, again, came, where I said the, the question came from the populace. They, they said these seven things, well, they actually said six of these things. And then um, when we collaborated with our community, they, um, they, gave, so they gave us one more trait to look for. So the opinion of employers was the, was the driving force behind this. Then we had faculty administration uh, meetings during the summer that were of everyone's own free will, which speaks very well of our, our staff and our administration where we collaborated on exactly how we wanted it to look. Um, and then at its infancy, we used Google Sheets, um, which was a little bit clumsy and uh, we couldn't say that it was fully uh, vetted to use a, a coined term from today's society. So we, this is what the Google Sheet looked like. Um, again, uh, this, is a, this is not quite a good um, representation of all seven of them, but you can kind of get the idea. Honesty was one of the things that the employer said they really wanted to see out of their employees. And then we stole the idea from um, the evaluation tool that our administrators use on firms. What are some actions that we actually see kids do? So ownership of actions never caught cheating or plagiarizing. Authentic person never caught stealing. So these are things that we can say we can see a kid do. And over here on the side, you see that this, this particular student, which I cut their name off, which was part of the reason for using this slide, um, they were evaluated by 14 different people, which is uh, an important part of this. It's an average of a bunch of different people. It's not just one person evaluating a kid where there might be a personality conflict or they may have seen them on a bad day. And this is over a duration of months, um, maybe even years that you would get to know a kid. Um, so the relationship part of this is, is a big deal. So they were evaluated by 14 people. Um, 10 people said that they see them owning their actions. Um, this, this number right here is the important one. Um, back to the feedback part of things. Um, when a kid can see the, the thing that they're the most efficient in, uh, they have the uh, largest ability to grow there. So if they can grow in the area of telling the truth when difficult, 
they become a better person, become more honest, and that makes them a better employee for later on. Um, I won't, I won't like uh, go through all these. Um, I'll be happy to share the slide, the, the Google slides with you uh, at any point in time. Okay, so here's here's how we actually did the sheets. Um, and I know that this isn't maybe large enough to see, but I'll, I'll tell you that this says first hour, second hour, third hour, fourth hour, and so on. And then the ECs over here are for extracurricular activities. So each student um, would have a sheet like this, and down at the bottom there would be tabs for John Smith and, and uh, Sally Smith and so on and so forth. So the teacher would click on that tab, and then they would come in here to first hour, and they would put a one in the places that that kid um, We'll get a, essentially a check mark for what we do now. Um, so then, then down at the bottom, it would give their rating out of um, out of a total of 30, um, 36 different. I'm sorry, 42 different points, and then it would uh, give them an average. Um, so someone who had um, you know 42 out of 42 would be a six star if they only had um, you know. Uh, 21 out of 42, they would be a three-star, so if that makes sense. Um, this is what the current report looks like, this is, and this is all web-based. Um, right now, we only have uh, USD331 as a client, so if we were to add, I believe Sterling is 376. I used to be there, so I, I kind of remember some of these numbers. Um, USD376 dot my six-star, would, would be a sterling website. And, uh, Citizens Bank of Kansas is one of the businesses. There's a VC box up, my six star. So there's, that's, that's already built in. Um, this is a just in case, obviously this is a fictitious student, um, but this is the data that um, we pulled to put into the report. Um, you can see that they have a 4.3 for dependability. Um, down the side, this would be the administrator's view. So the administrator could see how many of the teachers, Mr. Smith, Mr. Jones, Mr. Albin, and Mr. Wilson, have all had their evaluations of just in case. So um, the student on the student version, which is the next slide, I believe, we've taken off the teacher, so there's an, an anonymity for the for the teacher. But it also tells the student which ones of these things that they have gotten. So um, again, they're looking for low scores. They're looking for a way that they can. Um, they can improve themselves as a person. Um, this, these are a couple of things that we, we did early on. Um, again, this is, um, this is a little bit different view, a little bit different version than the website. Um, these are uh, actually vinyl decals that my dad makes um, that we've stuck around the school. Be dependable, there's be honest. Um, my favorite is be respectful is right above the principal's office. Um, the imperative here that you need to be something is kind of important. Um, so concept of verbs, uh, again, this came from the iPad evaluations that the principals come around and do a bus. Functional verbs um, imply that there has to be an action. The kids have to learn and then they have to apply it. Uh, traits that, that the employers valued um, in this order, honesty, dependability, respect, functional, teachable, and a team player. The community, uh, as I said, we, we uh, collaborated with community members, a couple of business owners, who also wanted there to be a seventh trait that was included, which was involved. So it, it was uh, it was originally thought that it'd be six star with six different traits, and that kind of made sense. But the community really wanted us, wanted us to add involved, and it did make sense that our kids, the more involved they are, the better they are um, in school, and then probably the better they will be as employees. Um, okay, the current version. Um, the curriculum and des uh, concept designers, myself, the collaborator and support, Mr. Albright, and then our program designers is Mr. Chuck Peters from Winsburg, Kansas. He has been a, uh, a tech, uh, computer tech guy at schools. He is now a program designer at our school. And I don't know which schools are power schools, but that's what, what he does. Um, so he does all the programming. I hope this goes to a live link. Are there any questions at this time? Oh, there, there we go. 
Okay, this is actually the, the website that we use. Um, So these are these are actual student names. So um, the uh, the administration team told me it was okay to at least have these pop up. Um, we're not going to give away any of their stuff, but this is how you would select. This is my daughter. Um, so you would you could select her name and then you could do an evaluation. We're going to do just in case. So here's the online. This is what this is how we would actually evaluate uh, just in case. We would look down through these verbs and we would decide which one of these things we have seen just in case do. Um, so we click on those and then we click the next. Um, so it's, it's become a very, um, very easy tool for the, for the teachers to use rather than to make sure they're in the right column on the Google Sheets and, and do a bunch of keystrokes. Now it's just um, click and submit. And since Justin is not a real person, I won't take a great deal of time considering whether he does these things and just get to the end. And again, I'll be happy to share this uh, site with you as well if you're if you're interested. Um, this is this is probably one of the, the biggest things that we've seen um, be a problem in, in schools and societies is kids being punctual. Um, this is a this can be a powerful tool for reducing your number of tardies. Um, one early on, one of the questions that I asked the kids. Um, when I was asking them what they thought of a program like this, if your teachers were to evaluate you upon these seven different things, um, what, what do you think of that? And immediately one of the girls said, I'm gonna have to start treating my teachers a lot better, which um, that got immediate buy-in from the teachers, of course. Um, but then they also said, well, if we're gonna be held accountable for tardies, am I tardy? Was I tardy today? So they're now concerned about it and there's some accountability. Um, I know this is maybe a little bit difficult to see, but down here on the bottom it says education. So we're, we have a curriculum, and I'll show you that here in a second. The communication piece is giving them um, some feedback as far as uh, the reports, and then the accountability is knowing that you're being watched. And again, um, I believe that we all will fall to the least common denominator unless there's some higher calling that we have, a higher set of standards that we live by. Um, so we'll say that he was uh, never tardy. And once we click save, then it saves that data into a data bank that's on a, a distant server, and then that server, can we can pull a report off of it. Um, I'll show you the lessons here real quick. These are the different lessons that we have. Uh, these are the different traits. Um, so you'll go into teach more. One of, one of the lessons that we've taught that I think has a, a lot of impact on kids because our kids right now are in the workforce is uh, asking questions for clarification. We've embedded some YouTube videos. You know, we have to be pretty careful about whether they are, um, we have licensure to do that. So those are some questions that we're continuing to work through when we're developing more curriculum. Right now we have a year's worth of curriculum that um, goes with the program. We'll continue to develop curriculum over the next three or four years. Once we get enough curriculum that uh, the curriculum would be recycled after kids have been in the program as a freshman through a senior. Um, we'll continue to update it, but we won't build quite as much. Um, being willing to ask questions for clarification. This is just a, a YouTube video. Again, this is asking the right question, which I really believe in. Um, what are the results that we want? How do, the, uh, how do all of the answers pre-exist? If we think about asking the right question, what we'll produce a better answer? Um, I won't read all of this to you, but um, one of the things that the kids really, um, this bullet right here, can you see how if you're working with expensive material, your mistake could be costly for your employer? Do you think that uh, they would uh, welcome questions for clarification? Um, one of the kids actually in my seminar had said, I know that, that that's true firsthand because I was working with um, expensive material and messed it up and my boss was mad at um, so asking questions for clarification is, is absolutely critical for our kids. And, and it has some real world um, application even at their age. Um, and then every, every one of these has a quote if you don't have time to do it right when you have time to do it over. Again, I'm a big quote guy, so I think that reveals how people think. Um, I'll go back to lessons and maybe just show you one more. Um, here's, here's another one that has another YouTube video in it. 
uh, describe to students what's meant by verbal manners and how it relates to being respectful to others. Please, thank you, you're welcome. I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, the kid present is a, just a cute uh, two and a half minute video that um, he goes through and, and, and just uh, uh, verbalizes that in a cute way that the kids remember. Um, why is it important to say thank you to others? Um, uh, these are questions, these are mostly just, just to, uh, I'm sorry, discussion questions to have with your students. Uh, the idea is to have these lessons be four, five, maybe six minutes long. Um, and then, you know, the discussion can carry on after that if, the, uh, if, the, if, it, if it's justified in the class. Uh, respect for ourselves guides our moral respect for others guides our manners. Um, one, one other thing that, um, that I, I see with our kids, our kids are conditioned at uh, Kingman. They're good kids. They say thank you a lot. Um, one, one thing they, they have trouble with is saying, I'm sorry. So that's another point that we uh, can bring out with a program like this. Um, you see over here, there's, there's some traits. This, this is just another hot link to get to the, to the lessons. Education, right now we have curriculum for nine through 12. We're working on, this is in construction. Uh, this is something that I'm considering. I know that this is gonna be a, a difficult one for myself because I haven't taught kids at this age group. Um, this age group really seems to be the age group that I hear a lot of feedback that we need to start with. And then, then of course, uh, like I said, we have some businesses that, um, so management, employees, and, you know, uh, but, and customer service. Um, if I can go back to, Okay, I think that that's, that's the end of my presentation. I, I guess at this point I'll, I'll field questions if there, if there are any. All right, are there any of you that have any questions about their six star program? I know that that is um, the soft skills, the social emotional skills are definitely part of the focus area as we look at these. What impact as you've gone through the program have you seen so far implementing these six, seven traits? Have you gone all through seven of them? Uh, are you just focusing on the six and then now adding the seventh or? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. The, the implementation of all of them happens during our seminar time. Okay. Um, some people call it homeroom or activity period. Um, but we have, we've actually implemented all of them at the beginning of the year. Each teacher will use the, uh, the lessons to, um, to go through and teach each one of those different verbs so the kids know what's expected of them. So then, um, what, as far as um, staff in service, what does that look like to prepare your staff to carry out these lessons so that there's consistency in the delivery across all seminar groups is that something that's part of your professional development or plc time or yeah we've we have had numerous in service time you know teacher meetings where we have gone through and, and looked at the individual lessons and people talk about okay uh, you know because keep in mind is, is we prepared even the six the six individual actions in each each of those verbs you know, that show up in six star, we have, we came together and said, okay, which ones are the most important? Because you can talk about honesty, you can easily come up with 20 to 30 action words or action, actions that, that this says that you're being honest, but that's becomes a manageable. So as a, as a community and the teachers, and, and we came together and said, which ones do we think are the most important? Because even, even looking at it from the soft skills from the, from the business side, you know, still skills that we want as for all of our students. I mean, there's not a single action verb in there that we can't say that we that anybody can argue and say, well, why do you want the kids to do that? Um, you know, every single one of them is something that we all said, yeah, they, I mean, this is exactly what we're after. So getting the teachers involved with with, with coming up with those and, and talking about them and saying, okay, what does it look like? You know, because you got to get over the subjective part. Uh, you can't be subjective with it. It's got to be, I see it. You know, it, it's very objective. So, um, you know, if you, have a, if you have a student that you that you know cheated on a test, I'm sorry, I can't mark you. You cheated on a test. Um, you know, so then you have the questions on, 
But what if I don't see him cheat on the test? Then you can't say that he's not being dishonest because you have not seen that. Um, you know, so it, it it's taking what we see on an everyday basis and really giving it that, that grade school ranking, you know, the old grade cards you put in, you know, kind others and you know, it's 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 a it's a more involved process, you know, that we used to have in grade school. It's just carrying it on in high school because typically that just drops off by fifth, sixth grade and, and actually sharing that with with parents and, and students. So as we talk about it with staff members, yeah, we we've had those discussions uh, in, um, quite a quite a few times. What exactly does it look like? So we tried to get the verbs pretty spot on as to what it what it is. If you're talking about the involvement, uh, you know, there there it's a specific verb saying we have we have three or four big events in our community. So one of the one of the verbs under involvement. The student is involved in our community events, and so what that requires teachers and students to have conversations and you know, say, "Hey, I I was there at the the King and County Carnival. You were there. Glad to see you helping out with some of the rides." So they they start having those conversations and they they communicate about that, and we we give get more involved and engaged with each other and those building those relationships, which is really what all this is entirely about is, is having something to, to have conversations about. So we talk all the time. It's it has changed tremendously from day one what it is. And what would be some of those changes that you've noticed from day one till current? <laughs> um, we have uh, teachers asking about what do you do outside of school? I mean, because uh, are you, I can tell if you're in extracurricular activities, you know, are you involved with this? Do you? So they're having more critical conversations with students trying to elicit that information or they see them there or they ask them about events? Yes, to, just to get to know more about them. Um, yeah, to, relationships. To, to build that relationship. Um, and, and, you know, the kids that are, excuse me, the kids are involved in 4-H. Um, you know, a teacher may have been involved in 4-H and um, livestock judging, you know, whatever the case may be, it, it's, it's a chance to build just one more bridge between, of commonality between the teacher and a student that they may not have come up with before. Do you find that your students are self-advocating more? They're letting their teachers know, I went and did this, and I'm, you may not know this, but I just helped out with the food bank. Are they yeah. self-advocating as they move along, knowing that they're getting scores? Sure, yeah, they, and, they see it. And this is, and I, and I failed to mention this before, but um, four years ago, we, we received a S3 grant, Safe and Secure Schools, and we started doing uh, Lions Quest and uh, community service. And the kids constantly are asking, so when are we going to do our concert community service day? Can I do this for community service? If I do this, does it count? So they want to know um, ways that they can be involved and then what. Their seminar teacher know. So hey, this fits into some of those success factors of civic engagement that absolutely. we're looking at that are coming from the state as far as that. Tell us a little bit more of your connection with the business partners because our, our group is oftentimes um, career and technical education people that are dealing with uh, business and industry and I noticed that you pointed out that there was a business and are businesses ranking students as well or they have access to this or Tell me more about that connection with business. Okay, that, that is something that's kind of on the way. Okay. Um, one of the businesses that's that's interested in using this to evaluate their employees is interested in, well, if we start evaluating our employees on this, we'll know what you mean by uh, ownership of actions. And if you have, and this has been the, the comment that's been made several times, we will hire your six-star kids. We want to know who your six-star kids are. So we have to be careful about I know that this is like a, a great card, but we're also aware of the FERPA laws. Um, the kid, if the, if the uh, Citizens Bank of Kansas, if they want to know what Johnny's six-star rating was, we can print it, and then they can take it in and attach it to their application. So kind of like a Hire Me First program? Exactly. A little bit on the character ed side. Um, also, I have my first cousin is the president of the Wichita Manufacturers Association, and I'm going to present to them. And what they what they desperately want is they want to know who they obviously they want to know who our kids are they want to know who's six star 
who's you know who will show up on time every time who will um, ask those questions for clarification so they don't learn you know some materials um, so they they want those kids well what we want is we want to bring our kids to the understanding that the better you do on this the more employable you will be um, which makes everybody better so how often are you taking these probes of data collection? You do a, a pre that they start out in the fall and you do it again in the spring to see a year growth, um, grade period, semester growth. Is it the whole year or their term in high school, nine through 12? What's your probe time? When are you taking these measurements? Um, early on when it was, when it was actually this, this sheet up here uh -huh. and they had to go through and fill out the ones, it was very time consuming for the teachers and we didn't want them to be resistant to it at all so we were only going to do it once a year once um, and like seniors in March juniors in April you know kind of break it up to where it's manageable now that it's um, it's going to be uh, you know like you can see just point and click and then submit um, we'll probably do it more often but again this is this programming is is kind of live sure. updating right now so I what I would what I would foresee is uh, you know, kind of figuring out how long it takes a teacher and being considerate of their time, but maybe once every nine weeks would be a, that would be a good delineation of time. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to do it right away at the beginning of the year, I don't think, because you don't really know the kids very well. Um, the other part of that is seeing growth in the kids. Again, seeing that that number four that's up there and saying, okay, they go from a four to an eight, and that's that's impactful. That makes a person a better person, which is, again, that's why, that's the why, because we want to make kids better kids than one kid. So coming back to a building or a district level question, um, do you get a summary report that then you can go in and say, our students are tending to score low in this area, and then you readjust your, um, Lessons. Emphasis, yeah. your lessons, right. um, more clarification, asking the why question, what's causing these things to happen. You know, it's kind of like our state goal of every student getting to that success factor 70 to 75 percent by 2026. As you're gathering these um, soft skills, character skills, does that drive some of your professional development? And if so, in what way have you noticed that? Minute. One of the one of the pieces is we're trying to develop um, the overall program. The complications with our Google Sheets and, and reports we collect that it was very hard to get, the, get all the data together and, and you know, there's, there's, there's something that that we have not really delved into yet because of this simplicity of having the data. Um, so that is something that we do see with the new website and being able to pull a report that will pull, say for example, the overall dependable uh, number mm -hmm. for the building. You know, you know what, looking at each individual um, verb and saying, okay, out of the dependable, which one, which, which of those is the lowest, um, allows us then, will allow us to target where we want to spend more energy um, or where or where are the, that, that particular group of students is, we're a little bit behind with. So that is a part of the new website that we're excited about using that we didn't have that capability of uh, with the previous piece. So that it's it's a continual, um, you know, we look at it and say, hey, you know, this would be cool. Can we add this? Or so we go to we go to Mr. Peters and say, you know, what's kind of report can you build for that? Um, so I, you know, it's it's something that's it's constantly evolving. Um, but that will be an important piece because as you talk about uh, growth at the at the local level, you know, we determine the growth that, you know, if we're saying, all right, we're at a 2.5 with this, um, and we can show that we grew uh, dependability from a 2.5 to a 4.4 very local measures, yeah. you know, and that's, that's something that, you know, we can then use for state. The results. <laughs> the results, you know, results they, they, they were there. Right? Yeah. So we're we're excited about what the new website capabilities are gonna be able to offer. That term. So we don't have that 
information yet, but it's the vision. The vision right. is there. And as you said earlier, this is a work in progress. Right. So you're definitely um, moving forward. You have an instrument that you customize to meet your needs now. It's more electronic in nature. It's uh, user friendly from the teacher perspective versus the Google Doc sheet that you had. Right. You can do more analytics with that information. Mm -hmm. Another area, did you oh, I was also going to say, um, you know, as, as I say, it's a work in progress. We're, we're about five meters from the finish line. I mean, there, um, and, and I did, and I, if, if uh, Mr. Peters was on here, he would, he would, uh, he would give this a, a second. But I, I do not have the technological abilities that he does. Um, but there's a ton of code that's written in. Um, but all that code's written. Now it's just how do we want to use it? So it's a matter of what, what do we want the reports to look like? What do schools want to see? What does the state want to see? Um, and then, then it's just a matter of building that code and then dumping the rest of it into it. So we're, we're, I, I don't want it to sound like it's a work in progress and that work will be another two years. It might be another two weeks. So we're, we feel like we're really, really close. So you're going to hit fall running. That, that is the goal Great. for sure. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you um, also changed some environment in the building um, and changing the climate, the culture. That was it. Uh, in addition to some of the signage in the urban zone, there's some other things that as schools look at addressing the social, emotional, and does their school look like a school that's focusing on social, emotional? What are the things that you done or you have in the future or that you think have been effective as you? Um, change to environment to cause student change. We talk about it all the time and it's gotta be it has to be all over the place, it has to be present and everything. Uh, we developed a six star poster that using um, using all the verbs uh, as a big letter K in women. You know, we have one of those frame posters in every classroom. Um, you know, it's, Unfortunately, if I'm talking to a student about something that falls in one of those verbs, I can point to it. Is that very honest? Is that so you're making those connections for that and, student. You know, that student. Yeah, teachers as well. Um, you know, it's continually having those conversations with the group and referring back to it because it gives them it gives them a common verbiage. Um, it's something that we are, we all are talking about, um, and we all we can utilize at any point. I mean, there's. There's not anything in there that is just out there. It's common, common, but it's just you know, one person saying it like this, one person saying it like that. We're, we're all talking the same. Um, but it, it, the ubiquitous part where everybody's doing it, everybody's a part of it. And it's, it really is, it really is nice to, to know that, uh, you know, I can talk to a student because the, the Teachers talk to students first, and so you know that they. If I say, you know, is that very respectful? You know what? That's what Mr. Alvin has to. You know, so just that common piece of it is, is really. But we have we do. We've got the vinyl signs up. They're all over the building. We got the posters in the hallway. We have in the scholarship applications coming up now. Um, our local community scholarships. They put that on there. Where they're asking what their six stars for, you know, what, what it is. Um, you know, with that, you know, we the whole the whole finding the data collection piece. Uh, you know, we, we had to vet that. Excellent. We had other teachers calling because they were more on spot. Uh, so we we would find challenges like that, and and so that. That's definitely something that, that the new website uh, eliminates. You know, it takes out of out of play. Um, it's we want it to become a community piece. You know, we want it to be something that it's, it's recognizable in the entire community. Um, and it's definitely headed in the right direction. When you speak of community, we've kind of talked about the school and the business. Share, if you will, where the parent impact has come. What feedback have you gotten from parents? Are they um, delivering some of these same lessons, so to speak, at home, reinforcing them? 
uh, seeing the change in their student at home? Have you gotten any feedback on the impact of focusing in on these seven traits as you've worked with students this year? Um, one, of the, one of the challenges with not having the data be embedded with the, we weren't able to promote as much of the uh, data to like the scholarships. And so that's been, that's been one of the challenges. The parents want to see it, um, but we've been a little bit reluctant to, to share it with them. Um, we've shared it with the kids, we sent a copy home of the, of the report you saw from, uh -huh. the Google, um, from the Google Sheets. But um, this will, this will kind of, this will help a ton. Knowing that it's, it's accurate, it's, it's been data banked, it's, it's embedded. Um, so as, as we see that, as we start printing these reports, um, and sending them home. Uh, the, the hope at some point in time will be to be able to link it to um, Skyward or Power School or whatever. We have Skyward, but um, Chuck, of course, being a, a Power School <laughs> program, said, I already know how to code it to where it'll link to it. So um, eventually that would be a, a hope that, that the parents could see at the same time what their grades are, they could see what their six star uh, scores were. Um, I also, there's just a couple more things. As we as we ask more questions, we, we come up with more uh, thoughts. Um, this this part right here, really, I really feel like this is this is you know the, the our mission statement. Embracing this movement will um, return constructive feedback, accountability, and education for the individual. The employee employee becomes a person that every employer wants. Uh, while the school, this is the part that I really like. The, while the school or company becomes a place where everybody wants to be. If we can change the school climate where everyone, everyone's treated with respect, everyone's honest, or at least we're moving toward that, it makes the environment better for everyone. And those kids that, um, I, you know, I don't know how many times over my 19 years of teaching and coaching, I've heard I hate this school. And it's not the building, it's the people in it. And it's the way that the people in it treat you. And so if we can change that, um, if we can pinpoint that one verb that, we're at 2.1 and the rest of them are at fours. We can make that better. Um, that's, that's, that's the ultimate goal of the program. Um, just maybe a couple more little things. These are just things that kinda, I kind of remember um, that the programming guy, if he was here, he would say, I don't know if you guys can kind of see what happened there, but it starts to stack this. So it's already programmed to where you could, you could make, um, it would work functionally on, on an iPhone and iPad. I guess I'm kind of a Mac guy, but if it was, uh, it will work on a on a smartphone. It'll work on a on a tablet, and it works on the computer. So it's already scaled. I guess is what Chuck would say it is. Um, one other thing that kind of comes to mind um, on this report, um, the reports is a is a big deal, and it's it's the hardest thing for Chuck to to get fixed um, because there's so many moving parts. But one of the things that we would like to see is. When the kids, this so this would be the administrator view. The on the student view, when they scroll over this that says four, it would tell them the two that they don't have. So if they for for uh, for honesty, so the the one they don't have uh, telling the truth, so they can see, hey, I need to find an opportunity in front of my teachers to tell the truth when they're. Um, or I need to um, nonverbal manners. I need to make sure I open doors for um, people who have their hands full or, or light in their load. And so those are lessons that they're being taught that we, um, it just gives them feedback as a student. And the students can log in, log in as well. They're giving them log in password. I think it's great that you got concrete examples for each one of these too, because real special ed's coming out in my head right now. Uh, I think that would help with your special needs kids also being able to see, okay, what does it really mean to be honest? What does it really mean to be respectful? Right. So you're making it very black and white for them. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the non one of the nonverbal uh, things is, or one of the verbs is nonverbal, and one of the lessons is, is it ever appropriate to interrupt a conversation? And if so, how? And most of the kids will say, no, you should never do that. Well, what if it's something very important? And so teaching kids to you know, tap on the shoulder and say, excuse me, I'm sorry for interrupting the conversation, but kids don't know that. I mean, so that kind of goes along with what you're saying. It's teaching kids some things that they, in society, it's, it's just been lost. It's just missing. And it, it, it absolutely affects the climate. 
Are there any other questions from the group today on their program dealing with um, their six star that has seven traits and how um, they're working into the program and using the data and growing with it? Are there any other questions from the group? And I don't see any on chat, so I want to thank you all for coming today and sharing your program. We'll be anxious to hear how things work for you as you pull this together and roll it out and looking more towards um, your staff development, your, how you're using the data to make changes in your system, and then ultimately impact success for all students. What do you see cost being for something like this? Um, I am glad you asked that because that, that is one of my questions. Um, if I, if I Go to um, I have a Google form that if you would if you would be interested in answering some questions, this has kind of what we think is maybe being a price. Um, but wondering because we've never done it before, is it fair? Is it is it equitable? Is it does it seem like it's in the right ballpark? Ballpark, and then I think there's also a place for a comment. So if that's too much or that's not enough or whatever, there'd be an opportunity to give some feedback, which we would appreciate. Um, maybe if that's a form you could share with us, we'll have Jody put it on. on it. Did a, she get it in? There's a link back at the bottom, down the bottom of that uh, slide that he had. Okay. I think you know just to kind of break it down a little bit, in that looking at startup cost to get everybody, you know, like if you're at a school to get all students into the system, logins, uh, training, um, so there, you know, a startup cost and then a yearly subscription cost, and we would look at the number of students which are actually using. Similar to other vendor yeah, programs exactly. that are doing but, based on student right. count and building. Right, yeah, but, but not really having anything concrete. Anything else for me? Again, I want to thank you for sharing your program with us today. And I know that that is a, an area of concern with the soft skills. Employers are definitely, as um, Dr. Watson went around the state and identified some of the things are not necessarily academic, but we have some other areas to address and certainly your initiative here is addressing those students and not only at the secondary level, but could prop go all the way down into your elementary and start taking those same verbs and putting them into their framework for that level. And the students are hearing the same things all the time. This is what this means. This is what honesty means. This is what, you know, being reliable means. And those and that their students are seeing a change. And hopefully you're Attendance, your tardies are showing that's probably one of the quick and easy ones to check right away um, the success of that implementation. So, you think Dr. Watson and because they, they've done like the state form has been trying to develop these new things in social emotional learning too. And this is something that the, as we are looking into the new case of accreditation model, is it's been one in part in developing our goals and what the outcomes. This seems to be very uh, obviously something that's been developed in, in our school district and we'll be using that and that can be at the local. Do you think the State Board of Education and, and or even prior to then possibly the State Department of Education would be interested in the presentation about what we're doing? It ties to a couple different things. It really is to me one of the outcome areas and uh, social emotional learning tied to that. It is also I mean, you have a lot of guys actually to what the new model is and all of that. But uh, it also is locally developed, which is a great model. The people are looking for things like this as well. So is it worth our time to uh, contact them? I don't know how you get there, whether it's uh, Dale Dennis or Dr. Watson, who develops the agenda. I can't read with on here for a little while. I don't know. 
Yeah, I saw that he was on. Um, one of the things I might suggest is anytime you can present on it, we have the Kansas Can Symposium coming up in April. They are going on doing something. And anytime you can step out there in front of a group, certainly that would be an opportunity. Um, counselor conferences, see if you can present to that group when they have their meetings. Um, we have the CTE Fall Conference, it's actually it's the end of July, first part of August. Uh, that might be an avenue. There's several things out there that possibly we can, you know, you can say, here's what we're doing and showing results, especially as you, if you're only five meters away from the end here, you're going to be up and running and be ready for fall, take that data and really show how it's made a difference for your school. What kind of triggered this presentation today was when we were at CTE annual conference and talking about our ESDAC Perkins Consortium project that Cleela proposed the possibility of. I don't know after listening and seeing this, Cleela, whether you feel like that, that this is a similar to, to the company out of Florida that, that who you had investigated purchasing well the florida thing was the uh, manufacturing certification but this was right. still things through federal just had a federal and just doing a workshop type thing because i've got about five thousand that i can work with for the 33 district contacts and so for developing those soft skills and the, the tool for appraising that and, and really gathering data that we can dial in and where are weaknesses and how can we help kids grow? Uh, that's that's why I brought up because we were into this, so we're probably not going to try to learn a different right program. And, and that's the beauty of this. I think that's important. Everybody knows character education. We, we're intentionally teaching lessons, but but the development of character has to be enmeshed into everything, all day, every day. Uh, and that's, that's, that's absolutely essential for the whole child, the whole kid. And, and forever we've tried to teach character education um, in isolation. And, okay, we're done with that. Let's get on to the next thing. And that doesn't cut it. Well, this has definitely got more dimensions because Basically, the thing that I was looking at is more for activity. You know, she's got some activities out there that we could incorporate in our schools. But this has got the accountability piece in it and everything that's going to be a lot easier to. What kind of activities are you talking about? Because, I mean, you know, if you say activities, that's like a curriculum also. Maybe is that what you're basically talking about? Right. That, I mean, just getting some some activities that teachers could do, but you know, could use to incorporate some soft skill, you know, making, making it more black and white, right. but you know, you've got some accountability pieces in there that this wouldn't even start to touch. And that's the thing head. that I've seen too. Huh? There, that's the thing that I've seen. There are a lot of character development curriculum out there, but very few of them that are measuring. I mean, where you actually have some type of data collection that you can go back, look at, and look for growth. Because that's, to, to us, that's what it was about. It's, it's not about necessarily telling a student, you know, you're, you're a 2.0, you know, and not, there's, there's a lot of holes there. It's more along the lines of what can we help you develop, become better, uh, to make you employable in the future. You know, not necessarily whether you're a, a college bound whether you're technical bound or whether you're career bound what can we help identify that these are the things that you're not doing very well that we've already been told by local businesses that they're going to look for you know so if you really want that job these are the things that they're saying that you need to do when you say local businesses we're going over to wichita as well yeah yeah we're not just kingman Mm -hmm. and his businesses uh, and, so. and the uh, the um the wichita manufacturers association that my cousin is i think he's still president of he was president of the last cycle or whatever okay um, I, i'm still 
and get on the agenda as soon as it's ready. Sure. If he calls me, um, it'd be like 150 businesses we get in front of. So, um, you know, as, as one starts the other, hopefully they, they help each other out. Yeah. Um, just one more thing about, uh, as Robert was saying, it's ubiquitous. Um, we have 40 practices during the course of the football season. We do 37 lessons during those 40, 40 practices. So, so not only is it in your core academic and your CTE classes, but it's in your extracurricular events too. So it is truly school-wide. Uh, I think what Mr. Clark said here in terms of being enmeshed in yes. it needs to be. I mean, it's part of the uh, idea even of activities, extracurricular activities. We've often said this is the best place that they really, one of the best places to pay off the fire. Now they're getting it during the day, they're also carrying it on. About Effective education, character education, and the skills you're learning not only by competing in different activities, but also type of character and different things that you should do. Like in football, since he's a football coach, you knock someone down. And I love it when you see the guy say, okay, play's over, pop him up. And the sportsmanship piece, all of that. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you again. And, um, did you have one more comment? Well, I was just curious, Bob, or as a superintendent, have you seen growth in your staff while this has been happening with students? Let me answer that differently. I certainly, I, you know, I have a good staff and they've been supportive of this. I answer it in that, have I taken specific, I mean, I could go back and dig up some specific data, but I will tell you over the last few years, not that we've ever had a lot of expulsion hearings. That's when I usually get involved, you know. I'm the I'm to listen to the expulsion hearing. I don't think I've had any over the last two years, maybe even going on for three years since we've really finally been incorporated this, which is one great thing. I think secondly is uh, talk about kids being nicer and kids, you know, it's more relaxed atmosphere because I think our kids and our teachers do have a respect for each other. And you know, we, we have kids out in the home, but they have a reason. And if you ask them, they respectfully answer, you know why they're out there or something, if you were to do that. And um, um, everybody will say we have great kids, but you know, you see our kids doing some really good things. I would say the overall, at least of course, I don't have hard data at this point to tell you this kind of stuff. So it's just my own experience of sitting, going out into the, schools, which I try to make it a point to do so, and they're doing good things. They are nicer. They are showing some of these different things. I think just looking, because I, I have an exchange student, just looking at when kids are getting to school, don't see necessarily as many parties as maybe we did. Just a number of different things, and again, it's just uh, my feel for it more than anything. Right. Well, I was just kind of curious because I know I taught with a teacher that said, well, whatever, whatever I did on my off time was my own business. And, you know, you know, and I, I just thought I just wondered if you had seen a change in mindset, because if you're asking kids to, you know, be involved with community things and then it's really more of a not just an eight to four measurement, if you get my point then I would think it would kind of start to feed on your staff as well, thinking, you know, if I expect John to do this, you know, I need to work on my weaknesses too. I don't think anybody can look in the mirror and sit there and say, I'm asking this, I'm judging someone else, I'm doing this, and I'm not. So, uh, but my, again, not having any hard data to say that, yes, it has that effect also. Okay. Thank you. We have um, Steve Wyckoff here today to kind of lead into the next little piece that we just talked about, the Kansas Can Symposium. So we'll let him jump in there when we were mentioning some. I get to sit down with all these illustrious people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, we just wanted to talk a little bit about the Kansas Can Symposium. And, you know, your discussion is a perfect lead into that. Um, I just heard a quote this morning that I thought was really good from Stephen Covey. He said, if you want to achieve things you've never achieved before, you have to do things you've never done before. And hearing you guys, you've never done those things before, and you're, you're working through all those issues. And with the Kansans Can vision, everybody's going to have to do that. 
You know, we wouldn't be talking about are our kids successful in post-secondary if they were all successful in post-secondary. And the Kansans Can Symposium is made up of leaders, all kinds of leaders, both those that, that have a leadership position and those that are just leading in their school, presenting about what they're doing in their school. And it's a great opportunity for uh, educators to get together and, and hear stories like you just told today about what you're doing uh, in all five of the, the state board goal areas, the kindergarten readiness, individual plans of study, graduation rates, post-secondary success, and social emotional growth. So, you know, we want to encourage people. It's April 11th and 12th. Um, you can go to kaesa.org and register and get more information. But, <clears throat> you know, we've talked a lot, uh, Bob, especially with superintendents about the difference between a technical problem and an adaptive challenge. Uh, you know, a technical problem, somebody knows the answer and you ask them, they tell you. This is not a technical problem. It's an adaptive challenge. And educators like hearing from each other, what are you trying? What are you doing? And, and nobody will do it just like you, but everyone that hears you will pick something out of there and modify it and use it. And, and you know, that's exactly what we need to be doing. But the symposium over two days is a perfect opportunity to, to get involved with people that are doing those things. So I want to encourage everybody to sign up and attend that. Um, one of the questions, pardon me? Yeah, you guys have actually submitted and been accepted to do a presentation. One of the things I've heard, it's the same presentations as we had in the fall. It's not. They're almost, they're all different. Some of the same presenters, but they're presenting something different. Or at least it's an update of what they're doing. So I encourage you. Um, that was just the, the, the one thing we want to make sure we remind people as we move forward. It's a great opportunity. Thank you. Some other updates that we're going to give you here as far as CTE is concerned. Just wanted to let you know, and most schools should have already received their individual plan of study survey. These were sent out to districts. This is a updated version of the survey that was submitted in the fall. Please encourage your staff and members to complete that survey so we know where we are with the IPS process. The other component that's new and be, will be available is the IPS scoring rubric. The IPS advisory committee um, went through some final changes. We're piloting that. If you are interested in piloting the um, rubric, the IPS rubric, uh, just drop Jay Scott a note and let him know that you're piloting that. And especially if you have any feedback from the use of that rubric as you've worked with your groups within your schools, whether they're your IPS implementation team or just staff in general, any feedback that you have on that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we were going to um, talk a little bit about some of the data collection, but we'll try to do that next month in April with the um, participants, the concentrators, and the completers, and getting that data out to you and some sample uh, data collection tools that you might use to help record and keep track of those cohort groups as they move through their high school program so you know which one has completed the requirements for a participant, a concentrator, and a completer, and in what pathways those are happening in. I believe Kalila has some updates for different events that are taking place, and I'll let her share those with you. Well, these are more or less a reminder uh, the first week of June, June 5 through 9, uh, we will have advanced design applications, and that's engineering design. I still do have some $750 stipends left, just a few. Uh, this one aligns nicely with physics. So if you're looking for some hands-on things to next-genize your physics, this would be a good one. Uh, the second week, uh, June 12 through 15, is engineering design and uh, that aligns nicely with that's the engineering design and development CTE on the pathway there are some nice uh, connections with algebra 2 as well as project management type things in that particular EBD level 
then June 26 through 28. Uh, you'll notice I skipped a week there, the week of the 19th. I'm at, uh, I've got uh, 30 schools that'll be, that are part of a uh, grant project that will be doing the National Robotics Competition Training for elementary and secondary. I will, they have asked me to submit another application that'll be due October 1. So if there are schools out there that are interested in being able to get the buy one, get one free super kit, as well as get access to the robotics training for 2018, get a hold of me because I'll be putting another one together. Because when a foundation asks you to go ahead and submit a second one, I know I have a pretty good shot of getting it. Uh, the project management is June 26 or 28. That's the one that uh, that class uh, sits in uh, at least 13 pathways. And I know if you look at uh, the cluster handbook, it, that's increasing. Uh, that'll be 26 or 28. And there is a national certification that aligns with that that you can tap into for students. Then uh, in July, uh, we will have the Foundations of Technology, EBD training. A lot, I, I set these up this summer so that schools that wanted to take and be able to implement the Engineering Applied Mathematics pathway in the fall, they would have access this summer to get teachers trained before school started. Uh, this Foundations of Tech, that is actually the first one in the sequence. Uh, which I know on the state profile is called engineering tech. Uh, it aligns nicely with physical science. We'll have the four day training uh, July 24th through 27. And we've done this before where we run uh, foundations of technology and technological design at the same time. Because what we found is that one is more science focused, one is more math focused. But when you have math and science teachers in the same workshop room, doing design challenges, what the, I find is they see, oh, science teacher says, sees, well, hey, there's a science application over in this math focus thing. The math teacher sees, oh, there's a math aspect in this science focused design challenge. And because they're uh, similar levels, uh, works real nice to work back and forth. And then uh, those of you that have mannequins, that kind of thing, but need the training for the Anatomy, we will have that October 4 and 5. And Anatomy and Clay did tell me they're going to give me the buy for, get one free again uh, for the mannequins for schools that are wanting to get mannequins. So, uh, okay, well, we have quite a list of things coming up um, as far as professional development, looking at your STEM pathways in particular. These would be areas that. Again, as you work towards your programs and you need some staff development or you're growing your pathways, these might be of interest to you. You can always touch base with Plela to um, find out how to go about getting enrolled in these or take advantage of some of the uh, opportunities she's been able to gather together, especially with the buy one, get one offers and what all can take place with that. We are currently working on a Kansas uh, virtual technical college and that will be a listing of career and technical education courses offered online 100% online through community and two-year colleges and technical schools across Kansas that we're just in the very beginning stages of reaching out to those schools those of you that were here with us earlier this year you know that Washburn uh, Tech was the first one to initiate that and they started the basic electricity class this uh, spring. We have a nice lineup coming in for the fall. And as soon as that website is ready to launch out there, we will let you all know so that you can go in and look and see what courses are available to your students online and what pathways they fit in and how you might um, implement those into your school district for your students use. So those are some, just some upcoming things that are taking place. And next month, our webinar will be delayed and we will be on April 21st because of the Easter week. And then I believe Martin Coleman is doing a Carl Perkins grant writing workshop on the 7th. 
So we adjusted our webinar date to the April 21st and we'll send you out reminders of that and hopefully you can join us and that Angie might be available that day to help us with some of that data collection that's needed by her department in pathways in your car reports and uh, Martin can also possibly be available give us any updates as you write your Carl Perkins grants for the upcoming uh, school year these are all things that are kind of on the horizon for us all as CTE coordinators and instructors so again unless anyone has any direct questions um, and I don't see any on our chat board I think we put some uh, links out there to the keys of uh, the website for signing up for the kansas cans symposium is on there and you can click on that so i want to thank you all for joining us today and especially our guest visitors who came in to present on their six star program we really appreciate them sharing what they're doing in the area of character ed and the soft skills so thank you so much and we'll see you next month